This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at parent functions, and in this video we are going to look at the following functions. Constant, linear, absolute value, quadratic, square root, cubic, cube root, exponential, logarithmic, rational functions, and sine and cosine functions. All right, let's get started. This is our first function, and it's called a constant function. Um, the reason why they call it a constant function is because the y value remains constant throughout the whole graph. So the function can be defined as f of x equals some value. I could say the value could be a, or maybe we could even call that. Sometimes when we call this in calculus, we say c for some constant value. In this particular situation, uh, for the, per, uh, the graph we're looking at, the value for c is 2. You can see the y value is always 2 and it never changes. Uh, technically, this is a linear function because it does form a line, but it uh, has special meaning uh, because the y value never changes, hence it's called a constant function. For our next function, this is called a linear function. Many students in algebra are very familiar with this one because it could be described as y equals mx plus b. Obviously in function notation I'm going to use the f of x, but uh, you'd say it's mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept, m is the slope. So we know that we could change the slope, we could change where it crosses the uh, y-axis, which is called the y-intercept. Uh, in this particular uh, linear function, it looks like we have y equals x. Looks like that's the function we're dealing with here. Let's get to our next one. For our next parent function, we have the absolute value function. Uh, the absolute value function can be written like this, absolute value of x. Um, that's how it looks like in this particular problem. Of course, you could always put values in front of the absolute value of x inside the uh, absolute value in front of x even outside we could you know stretch this uh, bring the uh, these branches closer together farther apart we could raise up where it you know crosses the uh, y-axis but in general it looks like a v-shape where the vertex this corner can be anywhere in the xy plane uh, what you can notice is that the right side here of this function looks like y equals x, or at least part of y equals x, and on the left side you have uh, another function, another linear function, which is y equals negative x, at least part of that function, and it looks like we put them together to make one v-shape. Okay, let's go to our next one. For these two parent functions, uh, the one on the left call is called a quadratic function, and the one on the right is called a square root function. I'm placing them together because they're related to each other. Uh, on the left, you'll recognize this from algebra classes. Uh, this is f of x equals x squared, your classic u shape. And over here, uh, you probably recognize the shape, but it is the square root of x. And I'm placing these two functions uh, together because they actually have the same shape orientated just slightly differently. So here you have a u shape. We have two branches. We have a branch that goes up here to the right, got a branch that goes up here to the left, and on this particular uh, curve here on the right, we just have one branch. It goes on forever to the right, but then it, here it ends right at the origin. Again, of course, we could put values in front of the squared or in front of the square root or even inside. You square something inside and take the square. We could put numbers around this so we could change the orientation. We could slide this thing up right, left, and, you know, expand it, you know, draw the branches over here together or farther apart. But basically, you're going to have these two shapes. They're going to have that, that those general uh, shapes. Okay, now, uh, the reason why I have them uh, together also is because I want you to see how they're related in a different sense. Um, they're close to being inverses of each other. If I just took the right branch here and found the inverse of the right branch, you would see this square root. 
you know, okay, so over on the left side, we see the u with two branches, and you're thinking, well, why don't we have two branches over here with the square root function? Really simple uh, explanation is that when you take the square root of a number, you're looking for what's called the principal value, which is the positive value, or at least the non-negative value, so uh, at least in this case. So when you take the square root of, like, let's say 4, your answer is 2, okay? So it's, it's going to be a 2. Um, you're not going to see the square root of 4 being negative 2. Uh, we're also not going to take the square root of uh, negative values. So you can see the domain is restricted. You, you can't take the square root of negative values, at least not on a coordinate plane like this, because otherwise we get into imaginary values. So anyway, that's why you see the square root having one branch, but the square function has two branches. Okay, square, square root, they're related. That's why they sound the same. Great, let's go on to the next two. For our next two functions, we have on the left, we have a cubic, and on the right, we have a cube root function. Again, they're related to each other. That's why I'm putting them both together. Uh, so on the left, we have a cubic. Okay, and on the right, we have a cube root. Okay, again, we can stretch, shrink, move, uh, transform basically these functions, but in general, this is what they look like. And they both have that S-like shape, two curves, two branches. They almost look like quadratic. Remember quadratic, the branches always go together, or in the case of a square root, it's only one branch, but with cube and cube root functions, there are always going to be two branches and they are in opposite directions. If one goes up, the other one's going to go down. If one goes right, then the other one's going to go left. Um, and these two functions are inverses of each other. So for the square and square root, they are not quite inverses. They're close, but these are exact inverses of each other. So uh, that's why they're related to each other. And that's why I'm showing them together in the same page. So you can see that they're related. On to the next. For this function, we have an exponential function. I'd love to be able to show you its inverse right next to it. I can't because the graphs are so large. Um, so for this one, we have an exponential. And I think in particular, this one is uh, 2 to the x. But uh, in general, you may have some constant, uh, let's just call it a, to an x power. So uh, specifically, though, this example, you're seeing 2 to the x. So you're seeing this uh, graph. Now, the right side of this graph kind of has that shape of a quadratic. It's not, okay? It's a different shape, but it's similar. It has that, you know, curving upward to the right, going up and to the right forever, just like a parabola. Uh, similar shape. Uh, but on the left side, we don't have any, uh, you know, the, the mirror image where it goes up for a quadratic. So this one actually has a different property. Um, it has a, a horizontal asymptote. So it turns out that the x-axis in this case is an asymptote, and that means that as we travel to the left side of this uh, curve, the curve, you can see this red shape, is getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. So that's why we say the x-axis is an asymptote. And the only time it actually touches or intersects the x-axis uh, would be at negative infinity for an x value. So as we approach negative and infinity uh, for our domain, the y value will approach zero. Okay, so let's get to its uh, inverse, which is next, that will be logarithmic. Let's see what that one looks like. For this parent function, we have the inverse of an exponential function. This is called a logarithmic function. Uh, so you would have something that looks like f of x equals log to some base of x. This is what it would look like in general. Uh, I think for the example that I have up here, I believe it's log base 10. So I don't need to show the base 10. If you remember, without the base showing, it is base 10. So uh, that's what you see here. Now, uh, again, this is you know very similar to what a square root function looks like. If you remember that it had that branch that goes to the right, 
it's similar. Okay, it's not exactly the same shape. I'm not going to say that a logarithmic and exponent or uh, quadratic have, or even square root, square root quadratic have the same shape. They don't. I'm just saying it has a similar bend to the right shape. Okay, this curve does go up forever and it goes right forever. I know it looks like it levels out. It doesn't. It actually goes up forever very slowly, but it is going up and right forever. All right, now what this graph does not do a good job of showing is the asymptotic nature on the left side. Now, technically, as the curve is, as we travel to the left of this curve and we're, we're going in the left direction, this graph should get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. Unfortunately, the software product that I used to draw this doesn't calculate this very well. You can see it looks like it's bending, it's bending, and then it, it just goes straight down. And it's just the way the software product draws this. So you're going to have to be a little forgiving here. I want you to pretend that it's getting closer and closer and closer to the y-axis over here. Okay, so it is getting closer. Basically, uh, this uh, x equals 0, the y-axis, is an asymptote for this curve. Okay, so again, the logarithmic, which you see right here, and the exponential, the one we just previously saw, they are inverses of each other. All right, let's go on to the next curve. For this parent function, this one's called a rational function, or sometimes it's called a reciprocal function. So the reason why we call it that is because it has this, if I could draw, uh, it has this f of x equals 1 over x. So in other words, there's some expression in uh, the denominator, and, and sometimes even in the numerator, but in this basic example, I just have 1 over x. So that's why we call it rational, rational meaning fraction, or reciprocal, we're saying something flipped. In other words, we have something fractional also. All right, so uh, one thing you should notice when you look at this um, curve, it's kind of interesting for a few reasons, because uh, it does have uh, an asymptote. It actually has two asymptotes. One asymptote is the x-axis. You can see as the curve is going further and further to the right, it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. As we go further and further to the left on this curve, it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. So that's uh, one asymptote, which would be y equals 0 right here in this example. And the other asymptote is this uh, y-axis, which is x equals 0. That's the line x equals 0. As we um, are, are coming from the right side of the graph, and we're getting closer and closer to the zero for x value, right? So as the x values are getting closer and closer to zero, the curve starts to shoot up, and it goes up forever. It's getting closer and closer to the y-axis. Likewise, if you're on the left side of the graph, and you're getting closer and closer to x equals zero, the graph plummets down forever, getting closer and closer to the y-axis. So you have two asymptotes. Another interesting little property of this thing is that it is its own inverse, or at least at least in this example it is. Uh, it's its own inverse, which is kind of neat. So I don't need to show you the inverse. You just look at it. It is the inverse. Um, okay, let's go on to the next curves. All right, so our next parent function is called a sine curve. So it is a trigonometric function. Uh, I just wanted to generally just show you the shape. Uh, if you have not already seen what a sine function looks like, it does go on forever to the left and to the right. And it has this constant loopiness that it goes up and down, up and down, up and down forever. Uh, in this case, it's never getting higher than 1, never getting high, uh, lower than negative 1. And uh, specifically for this problem, we have just a very basic y equals sine of x. We could stretch this thing out, make it very long. We could shrink it, make it short, make it... We can, make it oscillate very quickly. We could make it go very high, very low. We could shift the whole thing up. Yeah, so we could transform this. But this is what a sine curve looks like. And the basic sine curve does go through the origin. So in other words, 0, 0 is part of the function. Okay, let's show uh, a function that looks very similar to the sine curve. Our next one would be the cosine curve. All right, this is the last trig function that I'm going to show. Uh, there are more, of course, but uh, more than just sine and cosine. This is, of course, the cosine. Untransformed, very basic. This one does not go through the origin. It goes through a maximum point. Uh, 
Uh, again, this is unshifted, like untransformed, just your basic curve, but this is what a cosine curve looks like. Very similar to a sine curve. Uh, that's why they call both sine and cosine are sinusoids. Uh, but anyway, I have these graphed. I graphed the other one and this one both in degrees, so you can kind of see what happens that a basic curve goes uh, for both sine and cosine. It, it fulfills one uh, pattern in 360 degrees. All right. Now, you may be wondering why it is that you've been watching this video about parent functions. Why is it you need to know about parent functions? Well, in the world of mathematics and problem solving and, and dealing with real world situations, uh, it's necessary to write equations to describe certain scenarios. And the more you know about these basic functions, the better you'll be at being able to use them to fit those scenarios in those situations. So uh, also, uh, you know, to really understand these basic functions, you got to connect them with transformations, how to adjust them, move them around the plane. Uh, and you should know how to calculate the domain and range by looking at them. Uh, you know, when someone says linear function or someone says exponential function, you should be able to conjure up the image. If someone shows you a picture of, let's say, a quadratic function, you should be able to know that is a quadratic function, be able to uh, identify it by name. So either by hearing the name or seeing the graph, you should be able to tie all that together. And that's the point. It's the point of learning about parent functions. Go back to mathguide.com, check out our other hundreds of other videos, our interactive quizzes, and our text-based lessons. Take care.